us. Take anyone you can get in this league, home or away. LSU's really good. We're really fortunate to have won. They had chances down the stretch. They, they kept fighting and fighting. And they were tremendous defensively. Um, play at the end of the game, wow, what a pass. Uh, could have gone either way. Obviously, we're, we're really fortunate. Excited. Got to move on quickly because here comes another one at noon in a couple days. Questions? Mike, just on, what, on the pizza. <laughs> uh, what did you see on y'all's last possession? I mean, and and the jo and the job that Russ did getting that rebound. But yeah, huge. Um, we want to play down here. We had one, and, and Justin Hill has made plays for us, obviously, and, and the ball's going to be in his hands, and, and more to come moving forward. Um, we've got other guys too that we, that we trust down the stretch, but um, just trying to get downhill and, and thought if we were neutralized, you know, we could use one. And, um, we ended up getting a couple looks there, and, and, and Russ made a, an enormous play, obviously, and then converted the foul line as well. Huge play by Russ. Russell uh, obviously comes through there in the clutch, but uh, Jabri struggled. Uh, Noah struggled for a good long while. Yeah. Um, you talked about Justin. I, I guess the key to being a good team slash great team is winning when maybe the off night a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to if you're gonna be in a conversation, you know, to play some postseason, there's going to be – a handful of those, you know, for a team like us, that um, if you're fortunate enough to get over the hump and, and win some or all of those, you, you give yourself a better chance, obviously. Um, and we'll have more of those. And, and I'm sure LSU will as well. Um, but, I, you know, it wasn't our best offensive performance again, but I, I think LSU is one of the best defenses in our league. We're coming off a game where, especially in the second half, Kentucky playing with a big lead, we scored it probably easier than we normally will move forward. So um, shouldn't be overly surprised. And I think, again, LSU had a lot to do with um, the proximity to Jabri, you know, throughout the, the 40, um, the attention to detail, um, the defensive execution just overall. Um, they, they were terrific. Nothing came easy for us. What goes into the decision to not call a timeout after the free, made free throw? First off, who your guards are and, and, and what your strengths are um, offensively. Um, we've been a team that is, is pretty good. You know, if, if you look at our ability to, to to touch paint, you know, off penetration and draw fouls, um, our numbers have been pretty good all year. And um, we had a couple guards in there that um, um, that we trusted, you know, to make plays. Obviously, um, probably LSU's prowess too. And their um, ability to take us out of some actions as well throughout the game. You know the fact that uh, we uh, we called different guys' numbers a few times, and um, they just did a good job of, of blowing up some of our actions. So, just an opportunity to at least try it, you know, and um, enough time to to use one if you needed to use one. What's it sort of like in those last seconds where they get a shot? I mean, just what's sort of going through your head as that shot goes up? And you're just waiting to see how how it counts. Um, my goodness, scary. And at the angle, I was, I was down there in the corner, and it was one of the best passes I've ever seen. And the footwork there in the corner to tight rope the, the, the sideline and the, and the three point line and get a clean look off. Um, eager to see it uh, on film, but um, it was, uh, yeah, nerve wracking to say the least. It was we're really fortunate. I mean, great execution by those guys. There was a long stretch in the second half where Salah seemed to be sitting for a long time. Were you trying to make sure he had a lot of juice at the end? Because it seemed like he was playing really well. Yeah, he was. And there's a lot of different reasons um, to sub guys in, to sub guys out. Sometimes it has to do with them. Sometimes it has to do with the other guy that you want to get in or out for him. Um, the flow, how you're being defended, um, how, how you're guarding. You know, just There's so many factors um, with that one. Uh, as much as anything, it was, hey, we want to make sure we, we can ride him down the stretch. You know, we want to make sure that he can help us finish and um, <clears throat> get him some rest and, and uh, allow him to hydrate a little bit. He's, he was a true freshman who's playing a lot of minutes for us. RJ wanted to send another big game off the bench, and especially that dunk and transition, uh, the really crowd, crowd going. How does, what does he do that always finds himself having such a presence in transition? Really competitive uh, in transition. Um, 
you know, he's, uh, he's got good length. He's got ability to run through passes. He's really, really fast. And so, um, you know, his first, his first few steps there, whether he gets the ball or he receives a pitch ahead, um, especially off the turnovers, long rebounds, he's just out. You know, he's a, he's a fast player. He's got a nose for the rim in transition. Um, had a drive in, in the half court as well. Um, you know, where he drew a foul, he's converted at a high level at the foul line too. But he's a guy like Justin Hill um, that uh, you know, plays starter minutes and produces like a starter. He's a good player. How do you, Mike, how do you play call or when, when two of your offensive stars are, are, are struggling like from yeah. the floor shooting? I know there's a lot of elements, but yeah. how do you get a feel for that? How does the team adjust? I mean, that, that seems like a veteran thing when you're able to have uh, tough shooting nights from Jabri. And, yeah, you know, obviously moment. not very well. You know, I probably should have tried some different things. Um, I just, we, we grinded one out and nothing was real pretty offensively, but again, I think that has more to do with LSU's defense than anything else. Um, but yeah, there, there were some possessions there where you're searching a little bit, of course. Um, thank goodness we were able to convert at the foul line. Um, Russ has four offensive rebounds, got his extra possessions, of course. Uh, yeah, we, we've got we to execute better against the best defense. Well, guess where I was going with that was the, the freshman's ability to pick up some slack. Uh, they mentioned Melendez. It got different guys stepping up yeah. in different ways, it seemed like. Yeah, I thought, I thought Blue Kane hit a couple baskets there where we needed one, you know, played with some confidence, played um, under control in the paint, uh, and created those for himself, uh, continuing to develop. He's having good practices. Um, but our bench, again, if, if you look at, at our bench, four guys that play and produced in, in a lot of different ways. Obviously, guards get a lot of the love with the amount that the ball is in their hand, but to see a big man have a play like that, just how, is, how exciting is that to know, you know what he goes through on a game-by-game -game basis? Huge. Um, it's nice to see the big fellow with a game winner. Uh, those other guys have had their opportunities, and um, especially coming off the game. I want to say he held nine seals for, for layups at Kentucky, and Try to do it throughout the game today as well, and he's uh, he's really buying into helping his teammates be better, and um, so it's nice to see him benefit a little bit as well. When you say you guys grinded it out, yeah, do your best Florida teams do that too? Like when when you need these kind of games? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, again, in order to be in the conversation, we got to win a lot more, but um, it's certainly better than you know than the alternative. You know, and it's, it's not going to be easy in this league. And, and it's the best defensive league in college basketball. And it seems like every time you, you play a team, you say, well, well, they're one of the best defenses in our league, too. You know, like, who's not? Who, who doesn't guard you at a really high level? And uh, they're, they're, they're rebuilding, and we're rebuilding. And uh, you had two teams just fight it out. And we can say ugly and grind it and all that stuff. But really, uh, I probably should say more. Um, Make the point more that you, you had ten guys up there on the court, you know, for forty minutes that were just throwing haymakers. You know, it was a high level game of intensity. Um, I know everybody that played that game is going to be tired, sleep well, <laughs> and need some rest because we both got quick turnarounds. But it was a competitive, high level game. I felt like the crowd was pretty energized, and there's a home awesome. court, and the home court developing. You know, awesome. the punishment factor. Absolutely, absolutely. We were better defensively in the second half, and I thought that had a lot to do with with our fans. Uh, it got loud in there, and uh, I'm really appreciative. As a coach, trying to, you know, like you said, you're rebuilding and kind of building the culture of this program, how yeah. much does that mean to you specifically to see Huge. your students and fans get involved? I'm super appreciative. I'm, I'm more excited, though, for um, for our guys, but I'm also excited for anyone who was in that building. It was a fun game. It was because it was so loud. It was high-level college basketball, and, and the fans that show up and, and scream and jump on the refs, and, you know, just appreciative, but um, and also you know excited for them to experience. It wasn't like that last year. It wasn't that loud last year. Right. Um, I don't know if that was quite as loud as the Tennessee game, but it got loud in there a few times for sure. And look forward to a few more of those. Can you? What, what I think the, the guys were talking about the bubble drill. What is what is the the bubble? Drill? <laughs> uh, you put a uh, an apparatus up there on the rim, and you can't you can't score. So. It's, when you shoot it, 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 it comes off a piece of plastic sitting above the rim. 
can't give you a lot of shooting confidence, but it helps you become a better rebounding team. It's helped us a little bit the past month. We broke it out uh, post holidays, and um, you know, we did some two days, and we had the bubble in the room for certain drills. And when we first started, our guys looked at us crazy because it was something that was pretty prevalent back when me and Antonio were playing. <laughs> Not in the past few years, but it's, it's helped us. Our guys have embraced it, and. Uh, we still consistently break it out, not for as long as stretches now that we're in mid-SEC season. But um, every time a shot goes up, you know, you've got blackouts, you've got offensive rebounding opportunities, you've got uh, opportunities to go snatch it with two hands. Um, you're, you're in a fight, and um, it's been good for us. It's helped us a little bit. Obviously, we're not one of the best rebounding teams in our league, but we've gone from very uh, efficient to um, to Adequate, I would say. You've, uh, yeah, I mean, you matched LSU tonight. I just, I just wonder, is there a comp competition within the team? Somebody runs, or some, some win, some wins, some lose when you run this football. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Every day, um, the the winning team has an opportunity to to stamp the win with a uh, with a one on one. And if they do, the other team's got to run. Obviously, going to a place that y'all, you know, you're very familiar with. Just what are y'all in for on Saturday? Oh, I'm just not there yet. Um, I've got to learn a lot about them here in the next couple days. You know, um, start looking at them a lot closer. I, I, I think they're a tournament team. I, I do just watch them on TV two or three times. But in terms of the keys and all that stuff, especially just coming off that, you know, um, be a tough environment. We know that. Um, an opportunity against a team who I, I think is capable of beating anybody in our league. They've got size. They've got. They're really good in the offensive glass. They guard you like LSU. Uh, they can really space you with multiple guards. They can go make plays. Um, the ball screen continuity stuff is very difficult to defend. Um, so it'd be a very difficult game for us, um, just like every road game in our league. Coach, you came out of a battle on the road against Kentucky. What does it mean just to come back? We have such close one. Yeah. going on uh, to another road game and um, just progress the season as a whole. Huge. I mean, j again, and I know everyone's probably sick of me using that word response, and my team probably is as well, but um, just to come back and, and have that emotional response and resiliency and come to practice and prepare the last two days the way we did. Um, the shoot around today was really sharp. Um, there's no... And you can't do it in this league, but I'm just I'm proud of our guys. It, it, it's um, it's against human nature. Human nature is to pout a little bit, and then we were down significantly, and um, that hasn't been the case. That was a first time for this team, and um, we responded well. And then we responded in game here too, with holding a lead the whole game, and then losing that lead late, and, and going to make a play. So this team's. We've got room for growth. We've got a ways to go. We've got opportunities to win more. Hopefully we continue to do that. But um, I'll be shocked if this team, I'm not saying it when the ball stops bouncing for this team, if it, it was a resilient group all year. Any other questions for Mark? I was going to ask you, Noah, I think uh, 4 for 10 doesn't look that good, but he was in kind of what last couple of games and, and made a couple of big threes to start the second half. Do you yeah. feel like you start getting some confidence again? You know, Noah's confidence is never um, – Gonna waver. I, I haven't seen it waver. I, I've seen him in shots. You know, he thinks the next one's going in. He's really even keel. He's really positive. He's a confident guy. Um, probably his teammates. You know, probably in, in us. Like, oof, it, you can settle in a little bit. It's nice to see it go in for him because he um, he's one of our better scorers. Of, co of course, early second half got to go into transition. He had a couple too that rattled in and out. You know, he almost broke it open. Um, there are a couple of times if memory serves for himself, you know, and for us. But uh, he's really important what we're doing.